Be bold, be brave, be extraordinary, be vulnerable, be real, be curious, be true, be you. Welcome to Trusting Your Gut with world-class energy intuitive, Katherine McIntosh, a show designed to awaken you to enjoy the process of evolving, have fun along the way, and learn to listen to those silent in-between moments. You are the expert of your own life, and nobody knows more about the next steps to take in your journey than you. So please, listen to your gut and discover what's waiting for you to explore. Here is your host, Katherine McIntosh. All right, my friends. So welcome to today's episode. We are going to be talking about healing the nervous system and the benefits of it. And so let me ask you all a question if you're listening and tuning in. And for those of you that are familiar with my show, I do take live callers and I will be straightforward and frank with you and see what I can do to contribute to you on your journey. As long as it's somewhat along the topic of the class, we'll take your call. So you're welcome to call in. Um, but here's the question I want to ask is how many of you have tried to heal something in your life, a trauma, something that happened to you, a point of view, something you're trying to overcome in your life and you get like excited about it. You get enthusiastic. You're like, all right, this time it's going to be different. And then all of a sudden time goes by and something occurs and it might be an environmental trigger. Like you hear a really loud noise. You might go in somewhere and all of a sudden you're literally right back to the moment of the trauma. And I'll give an example. So, and then you go, oh, see, it didn't work. See, I didn't heal. See, it's not possible. So here's an example. Um, they've done a lot of studies with women and those who struggle with losing weight. And I believe I've given this example in past episodes. So there are women that went on this sort of trial and, and these studies, and they took these women who were, you know, O largely overweight. Some of them were obese and they did some research and they found, I think it's something like 85% of those women were sexually abused. That's pretty, that's pretty incredible. 85% of these women who were on the obese spectrum, 85% of them had been sexually um, abused. And they then did these trial studies and they took these women through how to lose weight because they wanted to figure out how to get over that yo-yo hump. And so there was a woman who had probably lost over 150 pounds and she started feeling great and she had kept the weight off for maybe a year and a half, two and a half. It was, it was a considerable amount of time that she had kept over 150 pounds off. And one night she's feeling good. She's at a bar and this man starts hitting on her. And you would think that that would be something that she would, you know, maybe be excited about. She hadn't dated in a long time. She hadn't had men's attention in a long time. And what actually happened is that this experience was a giant trigger for her and she relapsed and gained almost all of the weight she had lost. She gained it back and she was in therapy and the therapist said, what happened? She said, I felt unsafe. And so this is the conversation I want to have with you is that there are actions we can take to change the external circumstance of our triggers, right? Or the internal circumstance of our triggers. But I truly believe that if we don't fundamentally from the inside out heal the nervous system, then no matter how much you cognitively process that trigger, that trigger will still live in your body as an alive sort of atomic bomb, so to speak, right? It's a, it's a live thing that could explode at any moment if it surrounds itself in unsafe conditions. 
But when you begin to heal that nervous system and you really get to the root of what is going on, your life will begin to radically transform. And, you know, I went to grad school for somatic psychology and I was taught these somatic exercises. And I was like, yeah, that's for people who maybe, you know, we studied all different kinds of traumas to work with and that how these somatic exercises will benefit. Well, fast forward 20 years later into my personal life and I'm going through menopause and I've unexplainably gained weight and my nervous system is totally taxed and I'm hot flashing and I'm mood swinging and I'm anxiety, full of anxiety and I'm having panic attacks and like all this crazy stuff started happening. Well, all of a sudden I got this hit one day to start to do somatic exercises every day. So I do maybe five minutes in the morning, you know, after I meditate and get out of bed. And so I'm like doing these somatic exercises and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, things, things really feel different. I feel different. I'm, I'm not going to my normal triggers. I'm, I'm actually feeling a lot more inspired and I don't feel so, um, at the effect of these giant mood swings I was having. And my poor son was like, mom, <laughs> you better figure this out. So, so it, what it did for me is it awakened in me this giant curiosity of what would happen for the next year of my life if I committed to five minutes a day doing these somatic exercises. Now I got to tell you, it's only been a few months, but what I'm noticing, and then I'm walking a group of people who, who do live coaching with me or group coaching with me, and I'm giving it to them. I'm saying, Hey guys, do this every day, five minutes. That's it. Maybe some of you, you only do it for three, no big deal. And see what starts to happen in your world where we met this morning and some of them are reporting that they notice that they feel dynamically different. And so, you know, it's one thing to process a trigger emotionally, mentally. It's one thing to sort of understand where it came from or why you are the way you are, certain addictions or behaviors that you have. But it's a whole nother thing to literally like I'll, I'll call it cleaning out your house. So you're getting rid of the cobwebs. You're literally like, like, uh, eliminating any old like imprint that's still left in on your nervous system around your triggers. And when you can basically change your identity, you, and you're simultaneously working on your nervous system, you literally can completely transform your life. And so there are so many modalities out there and, you know, none of them are right and none of them are wrong. They're simply just offerings of things that people have used that have worked for them and they want to share it with others. Therapy works, right? for those that are into plant medicine or psilocybin, it can work, right? But here's what, what I've always been fascinated by is how do we do it naturally, right? I was fortunate enough to spend eight years both in the jungles of South America and working with a, a shaman who was born in Louisiana and traveled all over the world um, and he believed in using this breath work. His teacher was Frank Natali. If anyone knows that name, brilliant, brilliant man. Well, my teacher studied with Frank Natali and, and he would teach this, this breath work called breath of fire in which we learned how to naturally activate the DMT in our pineal glands. So DMT is a drug called dimethyltryptamine and it lives in the body as a natural substance, but it's most of the time dormant. You take a drug like, you know, psilocybin, also known as mushrooms or ayahuasca, it activates, or San Pedro, it activates the DMT in your pineal gland. But guess what? You can also do it naturally through breath work. 
And I don't know about you. I don't like to be out of control in that way. And, you know, I've never done ayahuasca. Um, it's not something that my body, when I get close to it, my body has a pretty strong <laughs> reaction, averse reaction. And I kind of like go the other way. So in this, in this conversation, you know, I'm a huge proponent of how can we find healing in natural ways. Now, supplements are good. You know, if you need to take anxiety medication, take anxiety medication, right? If you need to, you know, feel the urge to do plant medicine because you think that's your calling, try it. But where, where I kind of draw the line or where I get a little, um, iffy in my own world around this is whenever we become dependent on anything, we remove ourselves as the source of healing. I'm going to say that again. Whenever we become dependent on anything, we remove ourselves as the source of healing. And so I like natural ways of doing anything because you then know that you are the source for being able to heal. Now we might need coaches or therapists or, you know, medicinal practitioners to hold space for us. But at the end of the day, if you become dependent on that as your self-awakening, it's, it's, it becomes a, a bit of a slippery slope, at least in, in my opinion. And so there are a couple of really amazing ways that I think that you can heal your nervous system long-term because here's what happens is the majority of behaviors that we are stuck in, that we keep trying to heal and we keep trying to use outside circumstances or sources to give us the information for what we need to do to heal. We're repeating the pattern that the answer is not inside of us. And so when we're looking outside of ourselves for the solution, we become dependent. We forget that we are the main source of our own transformation. And so I love natural sources of healing because it allows you to know that you can do it right? That you don't need anything special. And I love somatic exercises because you're using your own physical body. And so what happens is people go out in the world, they're cognitively, they know, okay, I'm obese. I'm overeating. I cognitively know that I'm overeating because I had a sexual abuse and I'm putting on extra weight to avoid looking sexy, because if I can avoid looking sexy, then I won't get attention. And if I don't get attention, then I don't have to worry about getting sexually assaulted. And if I don't have to worry about getting sexually assaulted, then I'll feel safe. But my question to all of you in that scenario is, is there freedom in that? Right? There's not. There's not freedom in that. And so what this does is, is as long as I am doing a certain behavior, that certain behavior is quote unquote, keeping me safe, but it's not true that it's keeping you safe because the trauma, the memory, the experience, the pain is still in your body. It's still a memory in your nervous system. And most people's nervous systems are completely taxed 24 seven, especially now in this day and age where it's like, <laughs> you know, like there's so much information coming at us all at once and at a very rapid rate. And I got to be honest, it's hard to let your nervous system heal if you don't take the time to figure it out. And so my, my favorite thing is taking three minutes in the morning and doing what I call somatic exercises. And I'll put together on my website, uh, a little four minute video. I'll give it away for free. You just have to, you know, give your name and email or find a way to give it away. I'm not sure. And, um, it's just a, a quick four and a half minute video in which you can do these somatic exercises. I also teach it in my, um, uh, breakthrough body challenge, which we're going to do another one in the beginning of September. And, and I'll give it away. 
So when you find this, if you got it and you're like, hey, it's I don't see it on your website, send us a message, send us an email to Catherine at catherinemackintosh.com and we'll do our best to um, send you the link as soon as it's ready. Um, so the, this concept of, of, of when you use your body to literally rock your nervous system into safety. And when your nervous system feels safe, now you have access to your awareness. So what most people do is they have their nervous system basically in fight or flight. And when you're in fight or flight, you cannot be aware of what you're aware of. So you might be a brilliant business person, but you're having a hard time making a decision that would move your business forward. And now you're financially in what might be the stress zone. And when you're financially in the stress zone and you're stressed out, it's pretty hard to relax your nervous system to make a intuitive choice that would move the needle of your business forward. And I'm giving different examples because this happens in all areas of your life. You don't even realize. And I mean, I work with people from all over the world, from all walks of life. I feel very fortunate to work with who I work with and what I do. And people really trust me with, with some of their most you know, vulnerable moments in their life and also some of their scariest. Some of the ones where they just feel like they're falling apart and they need someone to show up for them. And I'll tell you that when we work with, and I primarily almost always, and it makes me want to cry, work with, the first thing I do is work with someone's nervous system. And then they start to feel better. I recently worked with someone who went through a life experience no one on the planet should ever have to experience. And as a result to just survive, you know, the doctor suggested taking some, some medication, some anti-anxiety, some antidepressants. Right. And, and I looked at her, I said, I don't blame you. I would take them for as long as you need. Right. And a couple of days later, after, after we worked together, she called me and she said, um, she said, you won't believe it, but, uh, I actually took like, uh, started going off of one of the medications and I actually feel alive again. And she's like, I'm going to, I'm going to take a lot of time with the other one, but at least I'm off of one. And I know that it's possible now I can see the light. And that's all, all of us are ever trying to do. Right. Um, uh, yeah, hold on one second. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we do have a live caller, but you know, I'll just, uh, instead of typing. Yeah. So we won't take that call today. Um, that's not appropriate for what we're doing for today's conversation, but she can call back another day and we can do that. So, but tell her, thank you for calling in. Um, if I have time to talk about it at the very end, I will, cause I bet a lot of people want to know, <laughs> right. <laughs> how you end a relationship on, on good terms, <laughs> but I don't want to go there yet. So, um, so this point is, is that the, the, when, when our nervous systems are not in a balanced state and we go to try to make a life change you and your nervous system isn't balanced the external circumstances you are choosing to make that life change cannot last very long so let's go back to the diet example in the diet example when you go on a diet and you're really excited but guess what you're in fight or flight about food you don't feel safe in your body. You don't feel safe about food. You don't like who you are. So you're doing your best to attempt to change how you feel based on your external behaviors. And so you're like, oh, if I go on a diet and I lose the weight, then I'll feel better. And if I feel better, then I'll make better life choices. Well, I've tried that. I got myself down to 96 pounds and um, it didn't work. And I'm nowhere near 96 pounds. I look like I'm going to like fall apart at 96 pounds. Right. Um, and so it's like, it's like, 
it it's not an external change. And so when you begin to heal the nervous system, you begin to balance the nervous system, then you make different choices that support like the external solution, but it comes from an internal choice because now you're balancing your nervous system. And so, you know, you can also research and look up somatic exercises. Um, and I'll do my best to have this thing up for you. If you guys follow me on social media, on Instagram or Facebook, um, those are kind of my two main ones. I'm also on TikTok and on YouTube. Um, but if you follow me, um, on the Instagram or the Facebook, I can, we can put a link in so you can get access to this four and a half minute video of really simple exercises that I do that I walk you through, but there's people, um, on social media doing it. And if you resonate with them more, go, go find them, right? It's all about using tools that, that people you like. And so when you begin to change from the inside out your nervous system, what you're doing is you're letting go when the nervous system heals, you're letting go of the original root trauma. When you let go of the original root trauma, you can relax. When you relax, you make wiser decisions, you make better life choices, but now you're also in a receptive mode rather than a fix it mode. You're in creation mode rather than I need to change mode. And that is usually a a, uh, key moment that you're probably in judgment of where you're functioning from. And so I always say to people, you know, people always ask me like, do you have any regrets? And I say, no, I've I've made a lot of, you know, cute life choices. And I know this conversation well, because I was someone who didn't believe in myself, who didn't realize that my whole life, my nervous system was in fight or flight. So I married someone who was extremely abusive, who, you know, was extremely violent. Um, I knew I shouldn't have married that person. I lost a lot of money giving people money who I thought I could trust. But the truth is I wasn't trusting myself, right? And so when that happens and our nervous systems are compromised, no amount of external choices, right, will get the results that you're looking for. And so as, you know, as somebody who sees clients in person or who works with clients long distance, whether on Zoom or on the phone, the first thing I'm always working on with someone is your nervous system. And I tell people all the time, like if you can touch that spot on your, basically at the base of your tailbone, right? So our tailbone kind of curves and where sort of like the butt crack is, there's that bone, right? Right in the butt crack. And if you can touch that and find a way, right? And you can do it right now if you're listening, if you're watching, wherever you are in the world, and you just touch that spot in the body, right? And if I can sitting up right now, you could do it lying down, you can do it sideways, but all I'm doing is, is I'm touching that spot on my body. I'm, I'm basically saying hi to that tailbone area. And I'm asking the energy that's there, right? If, if it's possible for me just to surrender a half of a of a percent, right? Can I let go a half of a percent? Can I let go 1%? And as I did that, I noticed that my jaw relaxed. I noticed that my shoulders dropped. There we go. And so When you, on a daily basis, three to five to 10 minutes a day, your choice, you begin to do little practical exercises to genuinely heal the nervous system. And we're healing the nervous system. We're removing the imprint that the traumas had on our system, 
right? They say that one of the most traumatizing things to a baby when they're little is really loud noises, right? And there are some of us that are probably more prone to loud noises, to getting shocked with loud noises. There are some who are more, um, uh, you know, I don't want to say adaptable, but who don't get as severely triggered, right? If you guys ever follow a gentleman by the name of Gabor Mate, he's a brilliant man, um, And I've heard a few uh, episodes that he's been on and he talks about, you know, he was born um, in Auschwitz during the time of, of war and his nervous system really like was born under massive distress. His mother was under massive distress. And so he spent a childhood, you know, really struggling because he was born without that feeling of safety. And, you know, if I'm being honest, I think that even in today's day and age, the more that we uh, continue to live at such a fast-paced environment, we're endangering all of us of making it a habit to try to live a fast paced life without a whole lot of balance. And that takes our nervous system completely out of whack. And no wonder why we're addicted to swipe left and three second videos. And it's funny, you know, I, I try to be on TikTok. <laughs> I try to make quick videos, but I just, I'm not programmed to do that you know, and maybe down the road, I'll hire someone to take longer snippets of my conversations and, and do little tidbits. But if I'm just out of the blue, taking a moment and trying to make a 10 second clip on something that feels really meaningful to me, uh, I personally have a really hard time doing that. And so when we slow down, when we find a way to relax the nervous system, when we find a way to drop into our bodies, when we recognize that we, right, are the source for healing, we might need support along the way, right? But ultimately, we're the only ones who can change it. Because like I used to, you know, I have worked with a lot of people in a lot of different channels and avenues and different life experiences and different things they're looking to heal. Well, this is what I know. Someone, anyone out there, you know, no one can change your behavior for you, Right? You are the only person in the world that could change your behavior. And guess what? You're only going to change that behavior when you hit rock bottom, when you decide enough is enough, when you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Maybe you got a diagnosis that scared you to death, literally, right? So no one knows the circumstance when you're in that moment ready to make that choice to change your life. But what I will tell you is (laughs) no matter how hard somebody tries to support you to get you to change, until you are absolutely ready, you'll never make that change. And so this is about getting you ready getting your nervous system ready, getting your heart ready, getting your body ready, getting your mind ready. And um, once you start doing these somatic exercises, it makes a huge difference in what you're capable of. So that's what I got so far. We will be back after the break talking more about ways to heal your nervous system and why it's so important. Ohm Times TV. Do you trust you? Do you trust your body? What if the key to unlocking the weight, pain, suffering, fear, anxiety, addictions, 
traumas and sorrows was already inside of you. Learn to love the skin you are in so you can create the body, business, and life you love. Everyone always says you can't explain what Catherine does, you just have to experience it. From Hollywood actors to New York Times best-selling authors to some of the world's wealthiest and most successful, no two experiences are the same. For private sessions, online courses, live events, and the latest book Jack Canfield calls Game Changer and should be required reading for everyone, go to katherinemackintosh.com. K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E-M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H dot com. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Own Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat. Apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. All right, so we are back from the break, ready to dive into what I really think is such an important topic, which is the benefits of healing your nervous system. And, you know, I think that if we if we taught people how to heal their nervous systems, which maybe I'm having this conversation because that's something I'm supposed to be teaching. But if we taught people and we gave people the tools, so I'm going to give you a free video. I'm gonna, it's not even yet ready. Like I did, was not prepared. I didn't even know I was going to do this, but this topic really popped. And so today it's about healing your nervous system and I'm live. So I don't have a pre, this was not pre-prepared. I do have a video that I have shared with programs in the past. Um, one is called the breakthrough body challenge, and we've got this video ready to go, but I just have to set it up so you can have a link, download it for free and um, have access to it and then do it. But if you want to go research somatic exercises, you know, um, on Instagram or on Facebook or on YouTube, and I'm sure there is a slew of possibilities, but imagine if the world wasn't operating, you know, from a stressed state, from an anxious state. So it's not about not having fear or not having anxiety or not being stressed. It's about feeling resourced enough. So when those moments arise, you are resourced. And, you know, like, look, like, here's an example, look at the caveman days, no one said, I'm not going to go out hunting today because I'm having a panic attack. That wasn't even a part of our society. You know, over-the-counter drugs were not a part of our society. It's as we get away from one of the quickest ways to heal your nervous system, get out in nature, right? Do somatic exercises. Touch your tailbone and see with your eyes closed if you can soften that tailbone by anywhere from a half of a percent to a percent. And you'll notice that that things around your body will begin to soften, right? 
Another way you can heal your nervous system is you can take your hands to your heart. You can do a few breaths. You can take one hand to heart, one hand to belly, do a few, few breaths. Meditation is a great way to learn and trust yourself how to calm your nervous system. But working with the nervous system itself, it's an internal job, right? And how can you change something internal so that it manifests externally is you do the internal work, right? One of my favorite people who talks about this is Dr. Joe Dispenza right? Somebody who he had a horrible accident in his twenties, um, got hit, um, on a bike by an oncoming car and, you know, basically was, was paralyzed and, you know, shattered parts of his spine. And the doctor said he'd most likely never walk again unless he had surgery. And he said, well, I'm not doing that. I'm going to see if I can use my brain to talk to my spine to rewire the molecules of my body to see if I can heal myself. And here's what I know. If Dr. Joe can do it, you can do it. If you're suffering or struggling in any way, you can do it. But the first part is you also have to believe that it's possible. And so like, you know, we got a question before the break about, you know, how do you end a relationship on good terms? If the other person doesn't want to end it, that's a question that's based on not fully having a healed nervous system. If you have a healed nervous system, you're resourced enough to trust that you're enough. If someone doesn't want to end it and the other person does the, the, like, like the, the, what happens is when our nervous systems aren't healed, we grasp at things to hang on to. And we all do it. We grasp at solutions that we think will be the solution that will help us. And very rarely is that ever the truth. And so I truly, and I actually, like, I've never actually talked about this topic in this way. I feel blessed to do what I do to you know, be able to hold space for people's most vulnerable moments where they, you know, get scared and they just need someone that they can trust with very sensitive, vulnerable information. And almost always in every single person, there is an element of the nervous system not being healed. And so I truly believe that if we can get to a place where we can learn to self-soothe our own nervous systems, not be dependent on anyone else to do it for us. It doesn't mean we can't use somebody else, but we start to like learn how to do it from the inside out, right? Like an inside job. Then it will truly change one, the way you look at yourself to the way you make decisions in your life. Three, your need to want to have things happen your way. Part of most of us trying to control outcomes or control other people or have things work out the way we want them to work out is because our nervous systems aren't relaxed. And when they're not relaxed, we try to control the outcome, right? Totally crazy. So breath work, can be amazing. Meditation, yoga, calming yourself down, getting in a float tank. But those things, some of those things might just be like temporary moments where you heal it. I truly believe that somatic exercises, certain breath work, and like working with the mind and the body internally to heal it from the inside out, you being empowered to know that it's possible. And yes, people can hold space for you to walk you through it. But taking a moment to go, oh, do I feel safe around the people I'm with? And and you start to sort of adopt your energy or create an energy in which you start to feel safe. Huge. Huge moment, really, truly huge moment. And so there's nothing wrong with you. 
there's no problem to solve. There's nothing to fix. And yes, things can be scary. Life can be hard. Life can be downright terrifying, right? Deal with a lot of people who are suffering from loss of some form or another, right? Loss of identity, loss of a loved one, loss of finances, right? Large quantities or sums of finances. And when you go, oh, I'm still here, right? Oh, still have a roof over my head. Oh, okay. I guess I'm safe. Oh, still being, you know, taken care of. Those little moments in time where you catch yourself rewiring your habits and thought patterns, that's when your nervous system really begins to take care of you. And when your nervous system is taken care of, you now no longer in fight or flight. When you're not in fight or flight, your metabolism works better. Your digestion works better. Your thyroid works better. Your pineal gland works better. Your third eye, like everything on you, in your body functions so much better like a well-oiled machine when that fight or flight is not in play. And, you know, this conversation is so important. There is nothing wrong with you. No problem to solve. And nothing, 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 right? Whitney Houston song, and I will save your ears because <laughs> I will not sing it. <laughs> that would be very bad. But your your nervous system will begin to exhale. When it exhales, you'll begin to tap into and be connected to your awareness in a greater way. When you're connected to your awareness, you're more upright with your posture. You're more in a receiving mode, right? Hmm. And sort of all of the pieces come together. So if you've been listening to this episode and you're like, wow, it's making a lot of sense, Catherine. Making a lot of sense. Where do I start? You start small. Right? You start just choosing to begin to do these exercises so that you can wake up to a really different reality. So talk therapy might work for you temporarily. It might open your eyes to a world you didn't know was possible. When I first found talk therapy, I was mesmerized. When I found dance, I was even more mesmerized because I was like, oh, this is much more healing for me, right? When I found yoga, I got to fall apart and come back to myself, mesmerized. Everything I've ever tried in my life, I've been mesmerized or dazzled by it in some way because it served a purpose. And so I'm not going to go out and tell you there is a formula you need to follow. This is not me. That's not who I am. But I will tell you that the more that you pay attention to healing the nervous system, to, I'm telling you, somatic exercises, five minutes a day, right? When the nervous system heals, everything else works. So my friends, I'm going to invite you to really take the time to consider, right, what would be possible in your life if you began to work on doing an inside job, right? And 
instead of being so focused on looking for an outside solution, right? Start with your nervous system first. Don't make don't make a big life choice or even a small life choice when you are under duress. I don't know if you've noticed it, but almost always in every walk of life, almost everywhere in the world, right? When we make a choice out of a duressed state, distressed state, it rarely works out the way we meant it to. And so with that being said, I just want to thank you for taking the time. If this resonates with you, it's time to get to work. Do some research. Look out on the web. There's lots of ways to to do it. Dr. Joe Dispenza does a great meditation, right? Um, You can begin touching your tailbone using breath work. Definitely do some somatic exercises. We'll have it up on the website uh, very soon and uh, you'll be able to download a free video. But if you don't want to wait, go go look, right? Don't go wait, go look. But if you hear this at a later date and you're like, I want to see what she's given away, right? Given away for free because my friends, if the planet had every, all 8 billion people on the planet had resourced nervous systems, felt comfortable in their own skin, knew their value and their worth, we'd have a very different world. So may this be a reminder to take a moment today, slow down, take a moment today, take an extra breath, take a moment today when you're about to have a panic or an anxiety attack and ask if you might just be really aware. And so I want to thank you today for joining. And um, I hope this episode was very helpful. And I can't wait to see you for next week. Thanks for joining us today. Catherine is not a medical practitioner nor a licensed therapist. She has strong opinions and will express them and truly believes that you are your best advocate for any and every area of your life. If you need medical advice, please consult your physician.